Well, hello everybody. How we doing today? This is Pastor Mike Burns from Oklahoma. That's right. I'm coming to you today live on Facebook on this Tuesday. Today happens to be Tuesday, the uh, 22nd of March, and it's 2022. It's interesting. It's 2-22-22. So, uh... I know some people believe this is a year of the double, and I'm in agreement. Double blessing. The Bible says, for your shame, you shall receive double. And so uh, we're expecting the double blessing of the Lord. You know, the Bible said Elijah, Elisha had twice or double the anointing that Elijah had. Praise God. And so we're living in, I believe, a, a eternal double right now. God's blessing is twice over. Praise God. Amen. Anyway, it's uh, Tuesday, and we've been teaching on the subject of redemption. We've been on it for about a month now, a little over a month, and it's been some dynamic teaching from the Word of God, seeing the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament, which is a better covenant than the Old Testament or Old Covenant, based and uh, established upon better promises. And we've been studying that, talking about the, the curse of the law, and how that the curse of the law brought about sin, spiritual death, sickness and disease, physical death, and financial death or poverty and lack. We've been redeemed from all of those, plus a whole bunch of other stuff. And uh, we're studying that from the Word of God today. I want to make mention of something I think would be very important. Some have asked me over time, you know, what's that music you play in the background before you broadcast? And uh, this is a piano by uh, an album by a dear friend of mine who went to heaven back last year in the spring, uh, Randy Estelle. I'm just, my heart is just so uh, overwhelmed sometimes when I think about him not being with us any longer. Of course, his beautiful wife, Lisa, is still here. But all of his music, Randy produced our live album, Let Your Glory Fill This House. He is played with Billy Graham, with Miles Monroe. He played with uh, uh, some of the great, was Benny Hinn, others. And uh, he's a minister and has already established a great church in uh, Bradenton, Florida, called Exalt Church. It's still going strong. Pastor Sean is the, the pastor there. His son, uh, Nate, and his daughter, Celeste, are also there with, and doing a great job in ministry with his wife, Lisa. Well, you can go to Randy Estelle, E S T E L L E dot com, Randy Estelle dot com, and you can get all of his CDs, his music there. And I'm telling you, this band is a world class pianist. He plays blues, rockabilly, classical, I mean, everything rock and uh, jazz. I mean, amazing stuff that he, he absolutely has been uh, a master at. And so, I'm sure in heaven he's still playing up there, praise God. But if you'd like to get his music, I'd recommend you get it. Be supporting of his wife and uh, the church that he's established there in Bradenton. And uh, I'd appreciate it very much, so praise God. Hey, be sure to visit our website. It's right here, uh, mjbministries.org. We have all kinds of free audios, links to our YouTube channel. We have our newsletter, sign up for free. It goes out every month. We have the archives of our newsletter up there. We also have our app, MJB Ministries mobile app, and the links to the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. It's all there for you to enjoy. It's all free, and we encourage you to avail yourself to those very things. Tonight, I'm going to be sitting at a letter. Now, we have had over 668, I think it is, people that we've had sign up for a newsletter. We're down to about 578 right now. We've had some... Uh, wrong emails and so as a result we have to we've cut it back to we have 578 but tonight i'm going to be sending out a special letter uh to 92 92 different uh people that uh are friends of my wife and i and uh we're sending out a special letter requesting partnership and so if you're one of the 92 uh you'll be receiving that t uh, tomorrow morning you should have it and uh, not only that, pray, pray about it. Maybe you're saying, I can't do it. Well, if the Lord impressed you to do it, fine. If not, then that's absolutely fine as well. We won't be in any way offended or hurt by it. We understand that all of us are in different places. And uh, so just see what the Lord would have you to do. 
and uh, we share about some of the things we are doing uh, in that letter. Now, if you're already a partner of ours, you probably won't receive that letter because we don't want to make it seem like we don't know who you are, and we do appreciate those of you that have been supporting us. You know, we need your support. As I've been saying, this camera we're using right now is a Mevo Plus camera. We've had it for many years. It's starting to have some issues. We try to resolve them with the company. They're saying it's a hardware issue, and uh, we are not able to run our program as long as we were. And so we're cutting it into the early 20-minute range, and so we need to get new cameras. The three cameras we want to get cost about $1,000 total. We can get all three of them. Plus, we need a new computer for $1,500 and uh, for our ministry here. And we certainly appreciate the ongoing support, whether you want to give just a one-time gift or you'd like to give a monthly partnership gift, whatever the Lord lays in your heart to do. We're asking for people to make that commitment. And it's a commitment that if you're not able to fulfill it, we understand. But uh, we believe that people will fulfill their commitment. Praise God. Anyway... I want to have a word of prayer. We're going to get into tonight's teaching. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm asking you today to anoint my lips, anoint my heart, my mind, my thoughts, to speak to your people. Cause your ears to be listening, their minds open, and their hearts to be receptive to the truth is about redemption and what it means for us to be redeemed from the curse of the law. We see so much happening in the world that's wrong, Father God, and we know that Satan is the prince and power of the air. But Lord Jesus, you came to nullify his effect in the lives of people who would believe on you. We pray that there'd be an increase of the word of God with the truth of God. And we know that the truth is not just words, it's a person, his name is Jesus. And we're thanking you for the reaching of the gospel to all these parts of the world. What looks like evil happening in the world, Lord, you're going to turn it around for good and the sharing of the gospel will be received by these nations. And I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in the earth. Even though our minds may not be able to comprehend it all, we know you're not behind war, but you're using these situations that the enemy has meant for evil and you're turning them around for good. Father, thank you for helping us today as we teach your word in Jesus' name. And for everything that will be said, done, revealed, or manifested, we covenant with you to give you all the glory, the praise, the honor, and the thanks for it all in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen and amen. Praise God. All righty, let's get into the teaching of the word of God here today. Last night we were talking about uh, the Old Testament law especially regarding what it says in Hebrews chapter 7. And we talked about something very, very powerful, how that the Old Testament uh, even taught us that it was not adequate to save, heal, or deliver you and I. Now, there were certain blessings in the Old Testament, and we said that the Old Testament has been done away with, the, but it has been fulfilled by the Lord Jesus Christ. But then we saw in, in uh, Hebrews the seventh chapter, and I'm going to just take the last verse we looked at, verse 18, where the writer said, For there is truly a disannulling of the commandment, listen to this, going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. In other words, the Old Testament law was weak and it was unprofitable. And I said yesterday that this is really a very incredible truth here because many who are in the church world today supposed to be New Testament Christians, have a mentality that's an Old Testament mentality. And when the scripture tells us clearly that because Christ fulfilled the Old Testament law, that that law has now been disannulled. And we said that the word annul means to declare invalid, to revoke, reverse, to repeal, to overturn, to rescind, or to vacate. To invalidate literally means to cancel or to quash or to make void. So the law that God gave to Moses for a season, it had its purpose, it served its purpose, has now been annulled. It's been declared invalid, it's been revoked, it's been reversed, it's been repealed, it's been overturned, it's been rescinded, it has been vacated, invalidated, canceled, quashed, and made void. Praise God. Now, 
The Bible says in Hebrews 7, 18, that this commandment, the law, has been disannulled. So the word disannul, when you disannul something, is to act as if it never even existed. Well, this is powerful. And I give the example, when a marriage is annulled, uh, it is not the same as getting a divorce, uh, which would mean that the marriage was dissolved. To annul a marriage would be to void it or literally to expunge the record of its existence. To disannul takes it further, listen to this, to the point it would be obliterated with no chance of it ever being reinstated. Wow. Well, that's what's happened now for you and me. The law has been annulled, disannulled. It is no longer valid over your life and my life as Christians. Now, you can certainly put yourself back under that if you want and live under that law, but you'd be putting yourself in a place of great trial and trouble and things that God never intended you to live under, for Jesus Christ has set you free. That's why the Bible says in Galatians 5 and 1, Stand fast, therefore, in liberty where Christ has made you free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. See, these Galatians weren't even Jewish people. You'd almost get the impression when you read the letter Paul wrote to the Galatians that they were Jews, but they weren't. They were actually Gentiles who were acting like Jews. And I'm sorry to say this, and I'm, I'm really not sorry to say it. I guess I, I'm happy to say it, but it's it, it, I don't mean to hurt people when I say this. But uh, there are many Christians today who are acting like Jewish people. Now, God loves the Jews. We're not saying that. that and God loves Israel. But they have to come to faith in Christ. They don't have an automatic in with God uh, because they're born Jewish. It's not about our physical rebirth. It's about our spiritual rebirth. And when that happens, my friend, change starts from the inside and it affects everything in our life, even on the outside. Now, listen to this scripture I want to get to today in Romans 7 and verse 19. This is really an amazing word here. It says, for the law, this is speaking again of the Old Testament law, for the law made nothing perfect. I want you to say that out loud. Say the Old Testament law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. Now listen to this. The fact remains that the law only killed killed us and never gave us life. We already read from Romans 7 verses 9 through 11 that talks about that. Now, here's the thing that many people are doing that they ought not to be doing. You cannot mix the Old Testament and the New Testament together because they are two completely different ways of approaching God. Now, the Old Testament was based on an individual's good works, while the New Testament was based on faith in a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who paid the price for our sins, past, present, and even future. Can someone say hallelujah? So this is a huge difference between the Old and the New Testament. You cannot mix them, as I said, because they're completely two different ways of approaching God. I want to say this again because I think it bears repeating. The Old Testament was based on an individual's good works, while the New Testament was based on faith in the works that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, did when he paid the price for our sins, past, present, and future. Now, I want you, if you have your Bibles with you here, to turn to Romans, the 8th chapter. Usually it's either the same page or turn page. And look at verse number 6. But now, talking about Jesus, has he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is now the mediator, listen to this, of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Glory to God. Thank God today we have obtained through him a more excellent covenant, a better covenant established on better promises. Jesus has become our mediator, 
a mediator. This is the ex more excellent ministry that he has obtained, glory to God, as a mediator. Now, what is a mediator? A mediator is a go-between. It is an internunciator. Well, what do I mean by that? It's someone who is a reconciler. You could call them an intercessor. Now, glory to God, that's what Jesus has done. The Bible said when he left the earth through death and was raised from the dead, that he ascended up on high, sat down on the Father's right hand when he presented his blood as the atonement and the washing and redemption of our sins for those who will believe on him. And as a result of that, the Bible said he entered into a high priestly ministry and he now ever lives to make intercession for you and for me. He is our go-between, our interunciator, a reconciler, literally an intercessor, an intercessor. intercessor. Now, I want to be clear about something here, and, and I don't want to uh, be having anybody assume something about me. I'm not against the Old Testament law unless you want to compare it to New Testament grace. Now, if you're going to do that, my friend, then you want to have a problem. Look what verse 7 says, or Hebrews chapter 8. For if that first covenant, meaning the old covenant, had been flawless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Now, this is important. If the first covenant, the old covenant, was adequate, why would there need to be a new covenant? I said something to you several weeks ago, and I'm going to say it again. I met a Jewish rabbi one day on a checkout line at a store, and we got to talk, and I told him I was a pastor at the time. I was pastoring in New York, in Long Island, and we were having this conversation. And I just asked him, I said, can I ask you an honest question? I said, why don't Jewish people believe today, uh, many of them, that Jesus is not their Messiah? And he looked at me, and I was shocked at what he said to me. He said, well, actually, Jewish people do believe he is the Messiah. I said, really? I said, that's not my experience. He said, well, they don't believe he's the Jewish Messiah. They believe that he is the Messiah of the Gentiles. Now, listen, that made me go, what? I went, tilt? What do you mean? There's nowhere in the New Testament that there says, or in the Bible, old or new, that there is a Messiah for both separately for the Jewish people and a separate one for the Gentile people. Jesus Christ is the Messiah for both the, the Jew and the Gentile. Glory to God. And so the first covenant being the old covenant, if it had been faultless, Hebrews 8 and 7 says, then should no place have been sought for the second. Now, this is proof that the Old Testament was not a faultless covenant. Look at verse 8 goes on to say of Hebrews 8, for finding fault with them, this is what God says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, this is a quote from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. God says, Behold, there's a day coming, the Lord said this, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according, in verse 9, to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Now listen, this first or Old Testament covenant was voided. Why? Because we could not live up to it. Verse 10 of Hebrews 8 goes on to say, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Listen, I will put my laws into their mind and write them on the tables or in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. Now, God doesn't want uh, you just to focus on your outward man, but proclaims unto the Old Testament that there is a day coming which is the day that you and I are living in right now where God is wanting to work from the inside to the out. Praise God. 
Now, my name is Mike Burns. I'm the pa- I was the pastor of Real Church in Long Island, an 81 graduate of Rama Bible Training Center College now in uh, back with my wife. She wasn't my wife then, but she went the same year as me. And we graduated, spent 35 years pastoring in Long Island. We now have a new phase of life in ministry based here back in Oklahoma. We uh, left Long Island back in 2018 and eventually found our way back here to, to Broken Air, Tulsa, where I have family living. Now, we're here establishing our new ministry, which is MJB Ministries. And you can visit our website at mjbministries.org. Uh, you can get our free mobile app we have in the Google Play Store uh, and in the Apple App Store. The links are on our website. We have a YouTube channel, uh, God's Healing Word, Pastor Michael J. Burns. You can search for it there, or you can go to our website and find the link for the YouTube there on social media. We also have ways you could sign up for our free monthly newsletter. We have over 578 people signed up right now. We send it out once a month. Uh, We also have the archives of our newsletter on the website, which you can find right here, praise God, above my left shoulder. Now, I'm going to encourage you right now uh, with something because I want to tell you about my books. I have uh, my newest book called Church Happens. What every pastor needs from the people they lead. I want to send this to every pastor. And if you go, you get a free copy, a PDF copy of this book in its entirety with a bulk ordering discount information chart that will come with the email. But I need you to go to our website we have for the book here and all of our books called churchhappensbook.com. You scroll down, click the tab for pastors only, get your free copy, put your name and address, email address in there, and we will email you this book in its entirety. And believe that once you get it, you will want to have it ordered for your people to give to your first time guests and to your members. And I'm telling you, this will be a game changer in your church. Praise God. Church happens what every pastor needs from the people they lead. I cover four things in this book. I also do a four hour Saturday seminar uh, called Discover the Life You Were Born to Live, Dare to Make a Difference. It has this book here, my first book, and this companion study guide that is a course I teach for four hours We have breaks in between and a lunch break. It costs $25 per person uh, for the two books and $5 we add to that for the lunch, $30 total. We give that $5 to the church who hosts us and they provide the lunch with all the accumulated $5 uh, for the people who attend the seminar. Now, I will come for what I call a power weekend and we'll do the Saturday seminar in the morning and then we'll also stay for Sunday morning services And then if you want, which I would recommend highly, a Sunday night miracle and a healing rally that we will do, you can go to mjbministries.org forward slash invite to have us come. Now, there's 92 people that I'm about to send a letter to. You'll have it in the morning. Your friends of ours, we knew you on a personal level or you signed up specifically for our newsletter. I'm sending out asking for people to become one of our partners. Now, we're believing for at least 50. Certainly, we'd like to have more than that, but you'll be getting a letter in the morning, you, and if you get it, please read it. Don't just gloss over to delete it. Read the letter and pray about becoming a partner with our ministry here at MJB Ministries. I'm Michael J. Burns. I have to go because we're about to run uh, with our issues we're having with this camera here. That's why we need partners to get three new cameras. We want to buy for $1,000. We can get them plus on a computer for 1500 And then we have ongoing monthly expenses. Would you be a partner? If you want to be a partner, visit our website and go to the giving page or text MJBMIM to 45777 or dollar sign MJB Ministries at the Cash App. Glory to God. We love you. You have a wonderful night in Jesus' name.